I am William Padilla Brown. I am a multidisciplinary citizen scientist. I got interested in mushrooms when I was like 16. Quickly became interested in knowing where they were coming from. And uh, so I started growing my own to make sure that they were clean and that I could trace the source. Yeah, I've been working with my buddy Anthony on growing back to nature. For me, it's an action, you know, it's a verb. On a daily basis, that's what I'm doing. You know, I've, I've managed to create a formula where I can live my life exploring nature in a very sensitive and, and scientific way. I think that the first step is recognizing that mother nature is hurting and that affects our emotional bodies. I could communicate with nature, but I'm, I've been lacking the linguistic tools necessary to communicate with other humans about what I'm experiencing and how I feel. I live in such a juxtaposition because like I live in, I live with one foot in a colonial zombie and one foot in the redemption and ascension of humanity. Like where I travel around seeing humans that are reconnected with nature, expressing themselves, living joyous and loving lives and expressing that energy. I go into these experiences and learn from them and then go back into an archaic primal suffer zone and send my blessings and prayers and thoughts and energy to everybody that's existing in a hellish place that is staying there and shining their light for everybody else so that we can rem remediate all of these hellish zones from our planet. The places that need the help are full of garbage. Is the system that has been created and that is dominant in the global marketplace creates garbage. And mushrooms are the ultimate archetypical tool for how to transmute energy. So we've been given energy and we call it garbage and people have no value in it. Where I've switched my value to recognizing that that garbage is some of the most valuable things that I could be working with because I learned how to use mushrooms to turn it into value in other people's eyes. Work with these organisms that we find here to transmute that energy. So I think that's where mushrooms are the ultimate teacher. I think that's where mushrooms are getting their, their light shined on us right now. Because I was able to take coffee grounds and a $5 truck of sawdust and turn it into hundreds of dollars in a business that has propelled me into the future. When I had a young son that I couldn't afford diapers for or good food for as a high school dropout working serving jobs, I was able to turn coffee grounds and a $5 truckload of mushrooms into international social equity. And I've been showing and teaching thousands of people how to do this that have been able to start businesses for themselves and support their families or to be able to provide medicine to their community. And it doesn't take anything. All value systems are in the forest. All economic value systems originate from nature. Indigenous cultures have taken the brute force of Western progress. I use myself as an example. My body is made of Western African higher Antilles mix because of slave trade. I, I'm a mix up. What am I supposed to relate to? My mom tells me I'm black. I don't know what it means to be African. I, know, I don't know any of the languages there. I don't know any of the art of there. I've never been to Africa. The human brain is the ultimate scientific tool designed by nature. We may be seeing the dark side of what nature can produce through us, but it doesn't mean that it's unnatural. Nature put me there. And as our body has a microbiome, so does our community. And with more communal resilience and non homogenous systems will have more resilience to global pandemics and things like this. I'm really excited to bear witness to these vortexes being created and bear witness to the re-indigenizing of the world. And I hope that everybody can take those words with love as I've shared them with love. I think the idea of Appalachian of origins will hold strong in developing these new micro industries that will be necessary for the re-indigenization of humans in their regions. For me, in understanding and going back to a permaculture design system and how I operate and how I navigate through the world by operating and utilizing successful biomimicry, the best biomimicry mimicry would to be able to understand the information at its raw form. So I've been training myself to learn how to utilize genetic information as instructions for informing my permaculture design. To me, in looking at nature this way, I'm seeing them as information holders. They're libraries of genes, of information of how to live or how to interact with the world. They've been here for so, so long. That's why I connected with the algae and the fungi right away. It's the alpha and omega of biology. 
They're the ones that create the ecosystems when the ecosystems are destroyed. They're the ones that survive through all of it. Algae evolves into plants, fungi evolves into animals, together they evolve into trees. Like, you know, in their genetics, we have all the information necessary to know how to live on this earth. And we can utilize that as a template to learn how to exist into the future. When I was studying Cordyceps militaris, um, when I wrote my first book, I found research like 40 some documented insects that they were growing on. When I went to go do my second book, I went to go reference that same research paper and I realized only one of the insects was in North America. It was Anisota senatoria, which is the orange tip oakworm moth, and it's the most common species that we find Cordyceps militaris growing on in Pennsylvania. So the Cordyceps in my area inherently has a direct linkage with the oak tree, which also has its own set of truffles. Uh, it has the maitake that's associated with it, and a whole host of other mushrooms, um, as well as hosting bird species. Oak trees drop their acorns in different places on different years. What this does is it moves the squirrel population around the ecosystems. I've really been coming to know the oak as a pillar in the ecosystem. It feels very maternal. It just it stays there and hosts life for so many in so many different ways. Its microbiome is very delicious. Once we build these communities and raise children recognizing that they are limitless, there's going to be nothing stopping individual communities from communicating with the stars. Utilizing biological technology around a fire and utilizing our biocomputers in unison to do the really cool things that we can do in our social settings that humans used to do when they used to be in communication with the rest of the universe before something inhibited it. We used to dance around the fire until something stopped it, but you know, we're gonna, I think we're getting back to that.